Hi, everybody. I am going to go over week 10's um, lessons with you uh, in this uh, series of videos here. This is going to be the lecture material. You recognize this. This is the same house that I used for the midterm. I'm just going to be using it for um, uh, showing some examples of how to uh, deal with different uh, model patterns and drafting patterns and things like that. So I just have uh, a file open to play with. I would suggest on your end that you use either the very first cabin project that we did, or you could use the craftsman style project, but make sure that you do a save as and save it as a new uh, file name. In particular, it should be called mat um, materials and then your initials.rvt so that you recognize that you've uh, messed with materials in that project. So let me just show you what we're going to be covering. Um, Let's go into uh, class content here and module 10. And I'm just going to go right to the task. So you're going to be dealing with drafting patterns and model patterns. We're also going to be dealing with image files and we're going to be creating some new systems. Uh, but we're creating these new systems based on, in particular, on um, uh, the actual materials and their appearance, both in the hidden line format and on the rendered format. So that's the um, the, the main gist of this this week's uh, assignment. Uh, I have stuck in here two railing systems because I didn't know where else to put it. <laughs> you know, with railing systems, we're going to um, create a unique um, system uh, for railings. And um, and then we're going to also play around a little bit with rendering. So um, you end you end up having two files when you're done. Um, the first file is that material your initials initials Revit file, and then you're going to um, render a, a a kitchen render from either the Craftsman style or the Camp project that we did at the beginning of the semester. I don't really care which one you use. I just want you to be able to play around with adding lights. Um, and uh, using the camera to create a perspective and then rendering a scene just to see what Revit does so you have an, a, an understanding of how, how some of that basic stuff works. So I will be recording some videos in, in succession here. So the first, this one here is just going to cover those drafting materials and patterns. And I'm just going to show you as an example how I might change the appearance of something. Um, so let's take a wall, for instance. And... Um, uh, let's say I wanted to change this wall to a stone veneer. So that's one of the things that um, I have you do in the lesson. So you, you get this one for free. So uh, if I wanted that wall to have a stone veneer, I want to uh, copy it. So we'll change this to exterior um, stone veneer on wood stud is fine. And so what I'm going to need to do is add a new material within the structure of the wall so that it has um, that uh, an image that matches what I've given as a description. So to fix, uh, to change that, um, I want to change my finish here on the outside from wood shakes to, to the stone veneer. So let's go ahead and click on the ellipsis button to open up our materials. And this will give me an offer to give you me an opportunity to show you um, the types of materials that are loaded in the actual project and the ones that you can load from the AEC materials. So let's first look to see if there's a stone material that we could use that already exists. So I just typed stone up here and you can notice I've got a soapstone material that actually is a custom material that I made. So you won't see that on yours. Um, and then if uh, we scroll down here, because I typed in stone, it into the AEC materials um, broke out the um, different materials under these categories that might have stone in the name. So um, I'm going to be a little bit more specific and go to, um, let's see what this one is. So that might be the kind of stone veneer I'm looking for might be a little bit too small, but to bring it into this project, I use this add materials to document. And then it should show up over here under project materials. 
So let's go under stone in particular and see if there are other stone materials that I'd like to use. Um, let's see what that one looks like. That's not exactly what I'm looking for there because that's more like a stone that I might use for a countertop. So I'm looking for that um, stone material that you might have on the face of a wall. So the one that I have here, I'm going to see if I can work with it. Um, so uh, the next thing I'm going to look at now that I have that material loaded in here is I want to look to see what I've got for graphics. So if I were to use that material right there in place of what I had here originally for a finish, um, and then I hit OK and OK again, um, I think what we're going to end up with is a blank wall once this stops thinking, meaning there's no uh, pattern at all that's applied to it. And that's because I'm using um, a new image file and I'm also I just don't have a pattern applied to it as a as a pattern that should show for stone veneer. So I want to select that wall again and I want to fix that because I should see that pattern both in the hidden line format and also I want to see it when I render it. So if I go back into edit type, go into the structure, um, across from stone natural soldier, I want to pick on that ellipsis button. And because I'm going to start making changes to the original stone natural soldier coursing material that I have in Revit, I'd like to duplicate it. So down here I can duplicate the material. And let's rename this stone veneer, okay? So I've renamed it stone, well, it'd be better if I renamed it um, and actually spelt it right. There, stone veneer, okay. So stone veneer now is my material I've created. Um, it's a copy of the one that's here. And so I wanna look at um, changing uh, the surface pattern of that material. So under surface pattern, I have nothing for a pattern. So let's see if there's a surface pattern that I can use. We have a foreground and background surface pattern. And then a cut pattern would be, what does it look like when we cut through it in section? So in this case, because it's a wall, I really want that pattern to show up on the surface of the wall. I don't need that pattern to show up necessarily in the section. So I'm going to click on the patterns and see if there's a stone pattern that I can use. And you'll see that at the top, we have two different pattern types. We have a drafting pattern and a model pattern. Basically, the difference between the two is a drafting pattern is representing something that would not necessarily be um, a, a dimensional object. It's representative instead of being to scale. So, for instance, concrete does not have really have little triangles in it. Um, so I can set that hatch pattern to um, a scale that's not really based on any type of real scale of the size of those little triangles. Uh, if I use a model pattern, this is related to the real sizes of things. So I, a model pattern um, for tile, for instance, is perfect because I can set the tile to be specific dimensions. So I would use a model pattern for tile, for brick patterns, for um, showing uh, standing seam metal because I could define the distance between the, the seams. Those are all things you can see. Everything in here has some dimensions applied to it. Um, that change uh, its pattern. Uh, so that is the difference basically between the two. One is controlled by just scaling it up and down, and this one is controlled by actually setting real dimensions for the, the pattern. So since this is stone, um, I really think I could go either way with this. So I'm gonna go under the drafting pattern, and you see that we don't have a stone um, to select from in here. So I'm going to show you right now how to bring in a stone pattern from a, um, a like a, a third party website. So I'll go into um, I guess I'll go here and open up a new um, tab and go into Revit City. All right, so let me try it doing it this way too. Free Revit dot pat files i think we can find pretty good website doing it that way all right so cad hatch looks pretty good um i think i've seen i think i've used this before if you go to cad hatch i think it's a pretty good website because it shows you the pattern before you bought your you don't have to buy it by the way it, it usually um lets you just download it for free um so there are some example hatch patterns so i want stonework hatch patterns and I'm looking for a stonework hatch pattern that looks similar to the one that I had in my picture. And I think that's the one that's closest to it. 
So I'm going to click on that hatch pattern. And it comes in as a PAT file. So we would want to store this somewhere where we could get to it later and know where it is. So I'm going to put this in um, my modular 10 folder here just so I know where it is. And now I can go back into Revit and I can load that hatch pattern. So this is just dealing with it as a line, uh, hidden line type so far. We're not dealing with the actual image file yet. So I want to edit. And then across from that stone natural soldier, I actually want to, um, yeah, you know what I have to do is duplicate that material again because I canceled out of it. So I just need to duplicate the material again, call that stone veneer. And then I want to load um, a new hatch pattern here. So I'm going to create a new hatch pattern, a new fill pattern. And then I'll call this um, stone veneer as well. And I want to, um, whoops, looks like I had to hit custom first. And now I'll type in stone veneer. Now I can browse for the pat file that was uh, that I downloaded. And I know where I put it. There we go. And I'm just going to see what this looks like um, as it comes in. Uh, I'll leave the name. That's fine. Because um, I want to see uh, the import scale at one um, and see how it looks. So I will do a, an OK here. OK, so this is telling us it's too big. So try dec decreasing the line spacing values. So let's try making this 0.5. And seeing if it comes in, I point uh, oh five. There we go. So it was way too big. So that means I got to really make this a lot smaller. So let's try point oh one. Um, so let's see if that works. So this may this maybe is telling me that we maybe want to bring it in as a model instead of a um, a hatch pattern because I really want this to look um like larger pieces of stone. And I'm worried that this is making it way too small, but we'll try this out and see what happens. So there's our, um, there's our uh, new hatch pattern. And when we hit okay, it's gonna show up here in the window. And I just wanna apply it now and see what it looks like in my screen. Yeah, so that's not too bad actually. Those are about the size that I want the stones to be. So I got lucky there. Um, so now let's see what it looks like when we look at that elevation. So that would be the um, east elevation. And um, you can see that the looking at it from straight on, we have the, the nice uh, stone pattern. So we've just successfully created a um, stone veneer pattern and it's gonna show up properly um, in a 2D line drawing, no problem. So when we bring this into um, on a sheet, it's gonna print out that line pattern for the stone. All right, so now let's deal with it as a um, rendered image. So I'm gonna change this to a rendered view instead, realistic view. And um, the realistic view is got the stone pattern actually already showing up because we used a stone pattern that already um, existed in, in Revit. So if I wanted to kind of, resize the stone pattern or um, I wanted it larger, I could select that um, wall type, edit the type, edit the structure, go back into that stone veneer and edit that veneer and go under appearance. Okay. So what I've got here is this is where we're now dealing with what are called um, assets, material assets. And one of the problems you'll run into is if I just go ahead and start changing this, um, and resizing it and messing with this image, it will actually change and resize and mess with everything that has this asset. So we don't want to do that. So I want to take this asset right here and I want to duplicate it and rename it um, Stone Veneer. What this will do is make it a brand new material that will not be um, associated with any of the other materials or assets that are already being used in any of the other materials. So in other words, it's not going to mess with this stone natural soldier that is using that same jagged um, 
uh, jagged stone uh, material asset. So I've created a brand new asset, but it's using the same image file, which is fine. So what I want to do is click on that image file now and I can control the size of it. So the scale of the image file is set to four feet by four feet. If I want to, um, I think if I want to enlarge the image, I would increase the scale to, let me just make sure I'm doing this the right way. Um, and pay attention to your preview right here to see what happens. Um, that didn't look like that. I want to put five feet in. All right, so that's five feet by five feet. And I can't tell if that got larger or smaller. So let's make it something really drastic difference, 10 feet. All right, I think that's making it finer. So I want to change the scale to one foot to make those stones appear larger. Let's do one foot. Yeah, I think those stones now are appearing larger. So um, that's one of the ways we can just mess with an existing image. Uh, let's go back in there actually so I can show you some other things. Um, this image is the, the uh, repeating pattern that you're seeing and we have it tiled both in horizontal and vertical direction. So it's taking the image, the sample size and making the sample uh, one foot by one foot sample and then repeating it or tiling it um, to cover whatever it is that we have. So I'm going to see if this did the right thing. If it made the, the uh, stones too small rather than larger, then I will backtrack and set it to a larger. And it looks like made the stones a lot smaller. So I obviously want to make that um, uh, swatch or a sample size a lot bigger. So let's change the sample size here for stone veneer under appearance. We're going to change it to um, eight feet. And that's more like what I want to see, okay? So now the stones are showing up a little bigger and that's the size that I want to see them at. So if I wanted to make this um, the same stone pattern for the rest of the walls, because I'd saved this as a new wall type, I should be able to select the next wall and just switch it over to the um, um, stone veneer on wood stud and I should get the same result because it's all been set up within the, uh, uh, the wall system. So that's the basics of what I want you to um, understand how to do. Um, so the next, this next example, um, in the next video, I'm gonna just show you how to grab patterns from um, uh, that you don't have existing examples of in Revit, like image files and how to bring them in and use them uh, to create different effects. So go ahead and take a look at that next video to see how to do that.